In this video, I'm going to do something that's never been done in YouTube history. I'm going to teach you how to checkmate with king and queen versus king and rook. Now this is by far one of the hardest checkmates in chess. I would say it's about a hundred times harder than bishop and knight. I've spent no less than 30 hours studying this endgame, trying to come up with the easiest ways to win. During this time, I found numerous positions where you have to just know the pattern or memorize the moves. For this reason, I only recommend that you learn this if you consider yourself an advanced player. I will not be going over most of the simple one or two move combinations to win the rook, otherwise this video would be 12 hours long. I expect you to be able to find those kinds of moves by yourself. I will only be going over the harder variations. Let's quickly go over this tool called the table base. This is a, essentially a database of all possible chess positions with seven pieces or less. It lists out all possible moves that you can make and whether or not they are winning, drawing or losing. The moves are sorted by this metric called distance to mate or depth to mate, which tells you the number of half moves until you can reach checkmate, not including the checkmating move itself and assuming both players play perfectly. A half move is a move by only one person, either white or black, as opposed to a full move, which is a move by both white and black. There's also this metric called distance to zeroing, which tells you the number of half moves until one person is forced to either make a capture or a pawn move. A capture or a pawn move changes the position in such a way that is, it is impossible to go back, which pretty much means that you've made progress in the position. This is the only tool that I use to discover all these positions and patterns that you're about to see. It can be accessed by clicking this book icon on Lee Chess when you have a position with seven pieces or less. Distance to zeroing is especially important because the only pawn move or capture is for white to just capture the rook, which simplifies the position into a trivial endgame. With that out of the way, let's begin. In this first chapter, I'm going to give you some rules of thumb that can be useful to push black's king and rook out of the center towards the edge. I don't want you to memorize these moves, just look and try to understand some of these patterns, per se. Now let's take a look at this position. Black's king controls these three squares, and black's rook can check you constantly as long as they're protected. For this reason, I recommend that your queen controls at least one of these three squares so that your king can sit here and not get chased away. Preferably this central square, I find it more, much more useful. So here, black's rook can't chase you away, and after black's rook goes back, the queen comes behind and controls as many of these squares as possible. And after this move, check and king up, we've made a little bit of progress. Now take a look at this move, queen over here. Now one of the tricks for black is to actually run behind the rook, and then your king and, uh, your, the king and rook cut off your king into a little quadrant over here past his king. So for example, if black goes here, the queen can come here controlling all these escape squares past the rook, forcing him to go back over here. So that's the point of this move really. And here this move just controls that square so the king can't escape. And then once again, the queen controls a lot of squares behind black's king. And now this is a funny move, but essentially the purpose is that if black goes rook here, there's a nice little trap to win very, very quickly after this check. Only move is here, and then this is a fork which just wins black's rook. So this is a very interesting trap that can help you win. Anyway, this, um, this queen over here doesn't allow the king to try to escape past the rook. And by the way, this is just the top line of the table base. And queen controls a lot of squares again. Queen controls that square. And the king and queen kind of hide from the rook's tracks. And then we reach this position. So I, you, you don't need to memorize most of, the move, most of those moves, just pay attention to some of the patterns. They can be useful. All right, now I gotta warn you about a little defensive trick that black can have, and it involves white's queen being too close to the king on the edge of the board. For example, if white goes queen f3, the black's king is surrounded and all the squares are attacked. This is usually not good and can lead to some problems. 
uh, for, for white. For example, black goes check. Now if you play king f4, black draws in instantly with this rook sacrifice, forcing you to take, and it's a stalemate. So you have to go king away, and then black checks you again, and once again if you take, it's going to be a stalemate. And of course if you go back, there's also this check skewering you, you have to take, and it's a stalemate. So you have to go further away with your king, and now you've just lost a bunch of progress. So it's usually good to not bring the queen too close to the king, unless you can be sure you're not going to get chased away. Alright, let's move on to our first and actually most important pattern in this endgame. This is called a Fildor position, and it's usually what most videos on queen versus rook teach. This comes from a study from 1777 by none other than Fildor himself, and he found that there's only one real way to make progress. So first of all, what exactly is the Fildor position? The Fildor position is when black's rook is one square diagonally from a corner, white's king is also one square diagonally from the rook, black's king is on the edge of the board, usually supporting the rook, and white's queen is along this diagonal defending some of the checks. Also important thing to note is that because there are no pawns in this endgame, there is no direction. So any reflection or rotation of this position is actually the exact same position. So every time you, I, you see some of these patterns that I'm about to go over, you might have to remember that in your games you'll see a sort of rotation or reflection and you will have to recognize them. So what Philidor found was that in this position, the only way for white to make progress, if it's his move, is to actually make it black's move. If black could skip his turn whenever this position happened, this endgame would be a draw. So how do we skip a move? The easiest way to remember is just a right triangle of checks, starting in the center. So check, check, and then the queen returns to its original squares, and now it's black's turn. Alright, so I highlighted these squares for the rook. The rook has to make a move, and if it goes to any of these red, it is going to be easily won, so I'm not going to go over those. So it has to move to one of these green squares, and that will be a little bit more hard for white to win. And I have a very simple rule for when the rook goes to any of these green squares, and it is to actually just check in the center, then check in the opposite corner from where the rook goes, and then you'll be able to fork it. Let's go over this example. Rook b1, check in the center, and then go to the opposite corner from where the rook is, and you'll be able to fork it. Now let's go back a little bit here. You see that I've highlighted in this study some squares red, so this will help you visualize that if the black king moves to the red square, it can be countered by one of the blue arrows. So in this case, this would just be checkmate, so it has to move one of the other ones. All right, let's just go quickly go over some other moves. Once again, check in the center, go to the opposite corner from where the rook is, and then you can check and then eventually fork the rook. Same with rook f7, check in the center, go to the opposite corner, and you win the rook. And now there is one small exception to this rule, and it's when the rook goes past the queen all the way to the end. So in that specific case, which is the best move, you might have to just give two checks in the center. That's the only exception, you give two checks in the center. Because in this case, if you go check here, black will actually be able to hide here, and there's no more checks for you to win the rook, because everything is covered. So when you give a check in the center, black's king cannot go over here anymore. And you fork the rook. So what I've done in a couple of minutes is what most YouTube videos on queen versus rook do in like 10 minutes. I've just explained to you how to win this field or position with basically two simple rules. Now let's move on. This is what I like to call the line pattern. You can see the different kind of configurations of rotations and reflections that this position can run into. It's when black's king is one square away from the corner on the edge of the board and there is a rook and a king 
um, in the same diagonal. And the only real or the best way to make progress is to complete this line with the queen like this, four in a row. And what this sets up is a discover check. So if the rook moves somewhere, it's possible the white could give a discover check and same this way and advance the king. Now what this will really lead into is the fill door position when black moves the rook, you advance the king, and then you give a check from far away so you can move into the fill door position. So this is what it should lead into. Now of course black can make some other moves, so let's take a look at them if black moves the king. You just give a check, black's king has to stay guarding the rook, and now you play this move queen to d8, just attacking the rook but a little bit further away. What happens if you go a little bit closer is that black has these checks once again with stalemate tricks and you'd have to you'd have to um, step away with your king so that's not good. So you just attack the rook from a little bit further away, no more stalemate tricks and now it should be an easy win after check and king here. There's no more checks, you're gonna win the rook very quickly, you're threatening mate so that one's pretty simple. All right, let's say if king here, then you just attack the rook, it's the same exact position in one move. Let's say rook g6, and if the rook moves away, you, there's some sort of easy way to win, for example, a check here, and to, if black's king moves to any of these squares, there will be an easy fork. Yeah, you can also just check with your king, that was the whole idea, and Black's king can't really escape this cage and you can eventually fork the rook. So there's many ways you can win this. Alright, that settles it for this pattern. Alright, let's take a look at the next example. This is the exact same position as before, except that it's white's move. And we want to get to the same exact position with black's move. So what we can do is just move the queen on the same diagonal, one square. And after the king moves, you can usually give a check and then get back to the same pattern as before. Now let's take a look at some other possibilities that black can do. Let's say king moves here, then it is still one of the lines from the previous pattern where the queen attacks the rook. All right, let's say black does something else. Let's say rook g7. This will just transpose into the filler once we give a couple of checks. All right, let's say black's rook moves away this way. You can give a check with your king. And then this is actually very similar to the Philidor position where the rook moved away and your king is on this diagonal. And you can actually just go to the opposite corner once again and you'll be able to fork the rook. Okay, now let's take a look at some other move here. King g7, you can actually give a check here. There's only one square where black's king can still defend the rook and then you can just attack the rook from afar. It's exactly the same as before. All right, now final move here. Let's say rook f2. There's some easy ways to win the rook for, for white. So you, you can just give check, and wherever black's king goes, you will be able to fork the rook. All right, that settles it for this pattern. All right, now let's move on to the next pattern. Here in this position, you see that black's king and rook are on the second rank or one row above the edge. And what we can do in this position is actually make this queen move over here. And you will notice that kings are lined up and the queen is cutting off a lot of squares. So what's going on in this position? So for first of all, black's king cannot move. So the rook has to move. And if the rook moves away this way too far, it will just get skewered and lost. Now, of course, black can go, can always go very far this way, and we'll look at that, uh, at those variations in just a bit. But other than that, black will have to make this rook move one square away. If it goes here, there is again a skewer. So if he moves one square away, we can check. Black has to defend the rook. We can check. There's only one move. And then when we play the king here, it's the exact same position as we were seeing before, except shifted to the right. Black, of course, can make this rook move very far away, and we'll look at that a little bit later. Otherwise, we will have to make this rook move one square away, and then you can continue this exact pattern of checks and just shift the position to the right 
and this pattern will continue. Black will at any point make, be able to make this rook move, which we'll look at. But once again, black will get to the edge and now he cannot move the rook this way anymore. So he'll have to make a long rook move away and then you'll be able to win it. This is the sequence of moves, but we'll look at this in more detail in the next couple chapters. All right, let's take a look at what happens if the rook moves away in each one of those cases. Now in this first case, there's a little bit more memorization. So I'm gonna go to this study over here, first of all, and I'm gonna explain the pattern that we're gonna be able to do in each one of these rook move cases. So what I'm gonna recommend is that you give, always give this check to the black king, first of all, that's lined up with your own king. Now we're gonna take a look at king c8 first, but let's say black moves somewhere else. And now the idea here is to check your queen into such a position where you control this checking square from the rook, so the, the rook cannot go here, while also controlling this square where his king will be shielding your king from entering. So there is this square over here, which controls both of those. So we want to get our queen into that square. So we check our way this way and we get there. And black's king has to go this way. And now once we get the king out of the way and we defend against the check, we can actually advance our king. And now we're actually threatening checkmate. So black's king will try to run away. And now I have another important concept here, and it has to do with this diagonal of the rook. So it's usually good to give checks to black's king while staying very close to this diagonal because black's king will have to make a move one square away. And since we're one square away from the diagonal, we're gonna have much more forking opportunities. So in this case, we move the queen one square away, and if black's king goes here, we have a fork. So he goes back, and here, when we give a check over here, one square away from this diagonal of the rook, now you'll see that black's king will have to uh, move in a such a position where he gets forked. So this is a very important pos position to remember. You give check while keeping uh, your queen on uh, right next to the long diagonal of the rook. And then you'll be able to win the rook. Okay, now let's move back to this other case. And this is the only real case where it might be a little bit more complicated. And, it, and black's king ha can move backwards here. Now, this is a very nice pattern. And this uh, well, these arrows will help you um, learn like the pattern so the king moves this way and then the queen will check and then the king will will be able to stack back but let, let me show you exactly what's happening so the king advances now we're threatening a bunch of checkmates so black's rook has to give a check here it's not good so this is really the only move and then we walk our king this way because this is actually the one square that we do control with our queen which stops the checks black will be able to check here and um, let's see, and we move our king to the last row. And now there's no more checks. Now black has this move rook a7, which is a little tricky because we can't take it due to stalemate. So we just give a check and then we bring our king in. That's what those arrows were trying to tell you from the beginning. Now black has a couple of options here. Um, most of them are very obvious. so. Black will have to make a move with the rook. So let's say black goes rook a1. Then we just check the king onto the edge of the board. Then we check it one more time so that we have this square open for our king where it's not getting checked. And we bring our king in, no stalemate traps, no more checks. This is gonna be an easy win. And of course, king goes here, there's a fork. Of course, and if king a8, we can bring our king in already because it's shielded. All right, let's take a look at another possibility. And if the, the rook moves over here one, one square away, there's going to be this pattern of uh, moves by the white queen. 
So we give a check and then we have to go a little bit further away. So let's take a look. Now here, king c8 doesn't really work because after rook b6, there's actually, it's very hard to make progress and you'll still have to go through this variation. So we move the queen a little bit further away. And when black's king moves here, we give a check. And the reason we give a check here is because if the king runs away, we have this move to cover all the escape squares. If we were to give a check over here, we wouldn't really have that possibility. And then we give a check and then we can advance the king and it'll be an easy win. All right, so if, for example, he plays some other moves like rook a4, we can give, a, we can give checks and advance the king. So it should be an easy win from here. Now let's go back a little bit. And let's say black goes king b7 here. Doesn't have to give this other check. Now this is another pattern that is going to be very useful to remember. So let's go to this study. And this is what I think some people call like a triple fork pattern. And we have this check here. Of course, black can't move this way because of a simple fork. And now here we attack this rook and we also threaten checkmate. So black will pretty much have to give a check. And then once we go here, the queen defends the checking square and we're threatening almost like two checkmates over here and while also defending. So this queen creates just too many threats for black to defend against and you'll be able to win the rook very easily from here or checkmate. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if black's rook moves away in the second case. And as you can see, the way to control both the checking square and the king square is to get our queen to this square over here. And the way to do that is this simple pattern of checks with the green arrows, a couple of checks, and we get to the right configuration. And now our queen controlled or kicked his king away while controlling this square for our king and now we can advance and there's going to be either a fork or a checkmate or some easy win after this so very simple pattern in this second case now let's take a look at the next case once again this is the key square where we control the check or, or we check and control the rook's possible check and we can give this sort of pattern of checks to the black king to reach that square. So we'll take a look. Black's pretty much forced to go to these squares. And after this check, we can advance our king. And it's going to be a very easy fork. Next move. Okay, this is the other case. Now, once we shift this far, we can actually, once we give this check in the center, we can actually go to the corner to give a check and then a check over here will follow. So once we get this far away to check on the edge of the board, it's actually much more easy. And it's the exact same pattern of checks over here. We give this check next to our king, and then we can go to the back rank and just simply win the rook. So that settles it for the second rank pattern. All right, now let's take a look at this pattern, which looks pretty much exactly like the pattern we just looked at, except that it's white's move. And unfortunately, there's no way to force a triangulation to make it black's move in this position. So we're gonna have to learn a whole series of different patterns of checks. So in every case where this sort of pattern happens, when it's your move, I suggest that you move the queen on the other side of the rook. So that's gonna be easy to remember. Now in this specific case, the queen will sort of make a couple of checks along these squares to get to this critical square where it defends the back rank and attacks the king. So let's take a look. Let's say black's rook goes here, threatening some sort of checks. We just have to check our way into a position where we get to this square and then we advance the king. And now we're into a position where we've already seen this pattern. Queen chuck, chuck, and then we win the rook. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of possibilities that white or, or black can do. 
black could make this rook move but it's going to be an easier way to get to control the square so we just have to give two checks really and then we can advance the king and here we just we we can just advance the king even more and black is pretty much stuck there's going to be an easy we easy win from here now let's say if black goes to one of these orange arrows we just have to get to this square actually so let's take a look we just check on these green squares and when we check on this one black's rook will be actually lost next move and if he goes back this we just it's pinned then we can attack it so there's that small sequence of checks okay now final move rook d3 now after we give this check this square is already controlled and we can just advance the king and it's going to be an easy win of the rook all right now this is the next pattern it is our move and this one's actually a lot more tricky so we start off with this queen move behind the rook and now black has two good options now let's take a look at first when the rook moves all the way to the edge in this case we start off by giving a check right in front of our king now when do we get this check in right in front of the king now let me tell you how i remember so if once we play this queen move and the rook moves all the way to the edge if our queen is on a bishop or a rook file or rank so what do i mean by that uh, if we set up the board rooks and bishops go on these squares so if the queen is on one of those files or ranks if we rotate it then we give this check very close so queen on a bishop or rook file or rank we give a check so we give a check king goes here now let's quickly take a look if the queen goes here we just give another check and we're back to the same position we looked at previously where in, with the pattern when it was black's move all the way back okay so this one's very simple so black's king has to go this way now we give this check over here and black's king runs now if he goes here this is once again the same exact pattern we saw before so black's king has to go oops this way and now we give a check black is forced to go here and now we actually move our king up even though we're not controlling the checking square we actually are able to move the king up and now after let's say black checks we actually get to hide our king behind the queen and i think this might be called a javelin pattern when when the queen and king are in this sort of pattern I, uh, but i'm not super sure about all these names so in this case black um, black's rook is attacked while also being threatened and checkmate this is always very good to see and then after this there's no more defense for black and we're gonna win very easily now let's take a look at another move let's say rook here then we once again actually defend this square while also threatening checkmate and then we get a fork very soon or like this okay now those are all really all the variations if the rook moves very far however there's one other move which is this one and is this one's way more tricky so let's take a look so we still check a similar pattern of checks next to our king and there are two possible moves really for for black let's take a look at this this one though first if the king moves this way we have a series of checks on these two squares and then once we go here this is a very similar pattern that we've seen before where anywhere the king goes there will be a fork so this is what happens with those orange squares so black really has to go to this green arrow and then we give this check and then we can advance our king because this check is covered by the queen okay now there's two good options really for black let's take a look at rookie e8 first 
then we have to play this weird move which kind of restricts black while um, and and then this kind of forces the rook to move and then we have another trip um, little fork pattern here and this will be a, a win so this is probably the key move to remember and of course there's the other best move which is rook f2 and now we can bring our king in and there is more variations here if if the rook gives a check we can actually hide and it will be very easy from there so let's take a look at one of these two if rook f1 we can play queen h4 defending against the check while also threatening a checkmate this is again that double sort of fork pattern and then we have a series of checks and again another double fork pattern and now black can't escape the the net okay and um now let's take a look at the main line rook a2 and here it is very a very very weird maneuver and i think i tried very hard to not have this maneuver happen but you have to give a check over here of course if he goes here there's mate but after this you have to play queen g1 which is a very weird move but it does defend these squares where if black's rook checks you can move to one of those defended squares and now black's rook can't check on any of them and same thing here if you check you can probably walk in and the queen defends this one and the king defends that one so that might be some bit of the logic now let's let's say rook goes here and then you're able to attack it there's no more checks and the queen can actually enter now and check its way into a fork okay and if let's say rook a2 we actually are able to walk in with the king because these checks are defended so that's kind of interesting now let's take a look at this move rook c2 now we have a check on d4 which actually brings the king into a position where we get a fork so this might be very very difficult to remember luckily i you very you might very rarely get into this exact pattern where the queen's on a bishop on a bishop file or rank unfortunately the patterns don't get any easier from here in this exact case you might get lucky and the computer will be able to give you a triangulation to make it black smooth and get into the same exact position so let's take a look queen goes behind the rook and now we defend against this check and if the rook goes back we're into the easier pattern of this where it's black's move but of course black can do many other things so let's take a look at rook h2 if the rook goes here we have to play queen f4 to attack the rook and now there are many checks but we also have hiding places so let's take a look at rook e2 check we have a hiding place over here and now there's no actually no good square for the rook to go to because it will be easily won so black has to move the king and then we have some checks that allow our king to actually get inside and after this will be an easier easier win if black's king goes here this will be a very similar pattern and if rook or king e8 here our king will just be able to advance and there's going to be some easier ways to to check the king and win the rook anyway this is the easier check now let's take a look at rook b2 if rook b2 we have to attack in one more time with queen d4 now let's say the rook goes right back now our queen is in a different place from before and now we, there is this very very weird king maneuver we play king f5 there's no check over here 
So also, by the way, for rook e2, this is a position we already looked at. It just transposes. So black goes check. We attack the rook, and we also just block the checks. And after the rook moves here, where it's actually the only real safe square, we make this crazy move, king f4, just waiting. And believe it or not, even though it's black's move, this is such a position where a fork will be forced very, very soon. And you can try to find whatever um, black moves, it'll be an easy fork. Now let's go back. Over here there is a chance rook b5 check, but this transposes into the exact same position we looked at. Alright, so now let's say let's say over here black goes rook b2, this actually transposes into the exact same position we looked at. And now there was one more. If rook h5 check, king d4, and now once again this same position, um, a similar position with black to move and there is just no good squares for the rook and it will get easily forked. Let's take a look at some of the harder lines. So if king e8, queen g4, and now a fork will be forced very easily. If, uh, if rook h3, queen e5 check, and the fork is forced, and finally, let's say rook b5, it's not, it might not be very obvious, but there's this check, and then a fork will be forced. So there's some very weird king maneuvers, and just maneuvers in the middle of the board. So that's what can happen if the rook goes to f2. But there's one more move, or actually two, let's say rook f1. If rook f1 or rook all the way to the edge, let's just say because coordinates don't really matter, we still move this queen to c4. And now if, let's say, rook e1 check, we have shielded ourselves from the checks. So what can black do? Let's say king d8, uh, or king if the king moves, then, they're, they're, then we're just open for some checks. And now this is a similar position from before where we hit the king and defend our king and we get to, it's actually a mirrored version of the previous pattern when we check along the rook's diagonal. Okay, and let's say king here. This is a, just a very similar, very similar pattern, this transposes. To a previous position. Okay, so we're looking at rook f1. Now let's say black goes rook a1 here. There is this absolutely insane move. King f4, running a, sort of running away from the action, but black's or white's king is safe from any checks. And believe it or not, any move, once again, any move that black makes there will be a fork and these yellow squares kind of show all the possible forking configurations and they're actually the forks happen on these green circles over here so all these green circles are forks that um, control all these orange arrows so if we pick like any move over here there will be a green circle that you can fork the rook from otherwise you just capture it if the black king goes to any of the red squares, you fork it with a blue arrow. And so black can move the king to some of the, these other squares. And here we have a, another pattern of checks that will just force, force the king into some sort of fork. And there you have it. And let's say king goes here, then there is a check and there will be a fork next. So this is actually very, a very incredible position where wherever, it's kind of like a zoog swing. Not really because I think you can still try to fork even if black sits, but it's just such a fascinating position where all these squares get controlled. Absolutely incredible. All right, final move, rook f3. If rook f3, it'll be much simpler. There's 
you can win the rook in about three moves. All right, or four. Okay, so that should settle it for this pattern where the queen moves on the, the knight row or rank. All right, this is the next pattern. It's slightly less complicated, but still over, can be very difficult. So let's go over it. We still move our queen to the square behind the rook. And now black has a couple of options here. Let's say rook g3 over here. And it's actually the simplest because we get to check, same as before, we get to fork the rook very quickly. So that one's very easy. Now the best move here is rook all the way to the back. And as I said before, if the queen is on a bishop or rook file or rank, however the, however the position may be reflected, we give a check close to the king. So in the previous one we went around here but in this case we have to give the check close to the king now let's first take a look at this king move which will be a little bit simpler we just attack the rook same as the knight where we go here right away but in this in this case we attack the king first same square and then our king can get in and it will be a very easy one from here now if let's say rook e1 there is a very weird move queen to b6 and it sort of controls some of the checking squares that the king can move to it's very very difficult to remember so black's rook can't really go anywhere so black's king moves and then there will be a sequence of checks which is very funny here that will allow you to fork the rook okay it's going to be very hard to remember you but it is doable and okay now let's take a look at the main line which is king e8 and as we saw in the arrows from the start position our queen will make this weird pattern of checks and we get to fork the rook same with this king here so from the beginning this pattern of chucks will allow you to win the rook however there is this other move rook almost to the edge and we once again give this check king can't go there and now we once again defend move the queen to this sort of pattern defending some of the checks and after rook c2 we actually have another nice little pattern where we attack the rook and we defend some of the checking squares for our king to enter over here and now black has a ton of options let's take a look at them one by one the rook here we enter with our king and after a check and king here there's no more checks and you'll be able to easily win the rook very easily and you win the game that one's very simple let's say he checks then we just go where we can't get checked anymore and it's an easy win rook here same thing we can't get checked anymore if rook back then we have a little sequence of moves to a, a very short sequence of moves to just win the rook and the rook, let's say rook here, same sequence to win the rook. All right, so if let's say black does some other moves over here, rook g7, we can enter with our king and it's going to be the filler position. Otherwise, we are defending all the checks and it's going to be an easy win. And finally, if the king moves, we enter with our king, no checks here. If this check, it's going to be a very simple win once again. So slightly less complicated, but still a lot to memorize. All right, this is the final position, and it's finally a very, very simple position to remember. King's on the edge, and we just have to attack the rook so that the king can't move away from it. And after the king goes here, we actually can advance with our king 
and this square is undefended from the check and we're going to be able to win the rook very easily. Now if black's rook goes let's say here we can easily fork it in a couple of moves. All right that's pretty much it for this one. All right now we can finally move to the next set of positions commonly called the third rank defense. So what exactly makes up the third rank defense? Well the rook is actually cutting off white's king along a third rank from the edge. Black's king is on the edge and the white king cannot enter and it can be very very difficult because it's um, not very easy to fork this rook or get this rook out of here. So to break this defense we have to set up our pieces um, in a sort of specific way. So the first thing to do is to bring our queen onto the second rank as close as possible to his king and the center. So this was far from the center, but this is close to the center and as close as possible to his king. So that's the first step. And then we bring our king in to line up with his king. And if the rook moves over here, this is the exact position for the third rank defense. All right, now this is the exact position of the third rank defense and there is only one very specific way to break through this and it starts with this queen maneuver which looks very weird but the first move actually has an idea it's to disconnect the king and the rook via this square. Black's best move is to play king up and then we check and we check black's rook has to block and then we check here and when the king moves we can enter with our king that's the main sequence now let's take a look at a couple of options if black's king goes over here instead we can just transpose to the previous variation now if black's king goes over here it's uh it's a a little harder to remember but it's an easier way to win the rook we can enter with our king there's no checks black's rook will have to move away and now there is a sort of sequence of moves to win black's rook with a couple checks black's rook moves here we're going to be able to skewer it with some checks Okay, so pretty much black has to go this way and now we bring our king in and now black has a lot of possible options with the rook and I've highlighted some of the best ones for him. If black's rook moves to one of the green squares, we move our queen to the green squares. If he moves to the blue square, we move our queen to the blue square. So let's take a look at the first line. We move our queen in line with his king and if he moves back we have the same pattern as before with a what I call the line pattern. Now let's say if, uh, if black ever checks we can actually move our king backwards while checking. This is going to be a very key theme over here and then there will be there will be some sort of checks or checkmate threats but let, let, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that the, that sort of pattern let's take a look at another move let's say rook a7 we move to the blue square and if uh, if black ever checks we just play the king here and it should be an easy win if the black rook moves we advance our king if he checks we move behind our queen and then it should be an easy fork. Let's say rook a2, then we actually have a little bit of a weird line pattern. We attack the rook while also avoiding checks by creating our own discover check, like that. And then eventually we will be able to fork or create this sort of double threat and black's rook can't escape so that's one of the patterns of moving our king away from his king but into a 
sort of protected area. All right, let's say rook here. We go to the same exact line pattern. If, of course, if the rook moves back, it's uh, a previous pattern. So let's say the king moves. There's no check, so we bring our king in, and it's going to be an easy either Philidor or a checkmate. Okay, so let's look at other moves over here. If the king goes, we have some checks. Mm, look at that, we're, the, we're at the Philidor. If the rook blocks, we got some more checks to force the king out. And after this move, there's, there's no checks for black. And it's going to be an easy win. Okay, let's say rook here. We have some checks and we get to the Philidor. And let's say rook g1. We have we can bring our king in without worrying about checks. And then we just this is one of the lines from the the Philidor position where we bring our queen to um, the opposite side of the board. And we actually have to play this move just to allow the queen to come here. And then there's, there'll be a fork. So there's a lot of options, but um, there's a lot of options for black, but most of the obvious ones are, or most of the best ones are the rook moving to one of the green squares, and then we set up some sort of battery and usually hide the king back from the rook checks. And there should be some sort of fork very soon or filled or position. All right, so that's the first case for the third rank defense with this main queen maneuver to break through. All right, we're back to the third rank defense. We just played this move, cutting off the connection between the king and rook. Now let's take a look at some of the other moves that black could do. Let's first take a look at some of the rook moves, which are gonna be the easiest if rook moves away. Let's see here, we can bring our king in. There's no checks and the fork will come next move. If rook moves here, we can give a check and the next check will be a fork once again. So the only real other alternative except from king e7, which allows us to go with the maneuver, is king f8. And now there's two options. I think the easiest one is to just pretend that you're giving that check and it will usually transpose. For example, if king goes here, you can transpose. If king goes here, you just bring your king in. And after the uh, rook moves very like close, like, uh, like the field or position, it's not quite there because your king's not here, but there is some series of checks that you could do. And, and then you just attack the rook, or kind, of, kind of attack the rook, but pretty much defend this square so that your king might be able to enter. Okay, he checks, you bring your king in. Black can't go here, which would be the nice thing, which is why you actually put your queen there. If he goes here, we can actually just come in and there's no more checks and we'll win easily. So he goes here, whoops, not that. He goes here and now there is a sequence of checks or there's just a check that allows our king to enter because if he goes here, there's a fork and after he moves, we come in. There's no check here. After that check, the queen defends this square and it'll be an easy win from here. So if you want to remember, this might be the easier position to remember despite there being very weird moves with queen h4, bring the king in, and then a couple of checks and defending some of these key squares. Okay, other than that, there's a very cool variation, which is the top recommended move. If the king moves over here, we go in with our king right away. And when the rook moves, we actually set up a discovered check with our own king while attacking the rook. So we're kind of blocking or attacking all the rook's possibilities on this third rank from behind. That's the cool thing. And after, let's say, rook c6, 
we play one more fun move queen f3 attacking the rook once again and this time these blue squares are defended via discover check so black let's say moves over here and then this discover check that we've been setting up we can capitalize on it finally with king to g5 and then we can find some way for our queen to get in with checks and give forks okay well, other than that rook c7 we can enter with our king and set up the line okay other than that let's say black goes a little further away then you can um, give the check with the king right now because the square is defended and you can enter this way and finally if king g7 then there's a, a very peculiar set of queen maneuvers here which it, I, I understand if it's going to be very very difficult to remember king h7 and all these moves are actually just as good because this is the same exact pattern the queen moves to one of the green squares threatens to go to one of the red squares and ends up doing this blue arrow maneuver to get to the line pattern so this one going here is probably going to be the easiest um, black defends against that check which was the threat and then you set up the line maneuver and and then you you, you get to the, the line pattern all right let's say black makes some other moves we have this sort of fork forking the rook and checkmate a very easy win here let's say king h8 and here we have king g5 attacking the rook and there will be some sort of fork lined up while defending or defending the check and lining up forks and black can't really defend and after rook here queen c3 check and we're going to be able to fork very soon using checks on those squares okay so those are two possible ways to remember what to do after the king moves to here instead of up so we can continue the maneuver all right now this is a different case of the third rank defense so in this case the rook is not on this square where we can move the queen it's um on the other square a little bit further and in this case we just bring our king in and as you can see all the squares along the third rank are really defended so the black's rook cannot stay there so black will pretty much have to move the king and then we just squeeze the king in with our queen king moves in we squeeze it in and eventually we get to one of our known patterns now let's take a look at some variations here if black doesn't play king there he has rook h3 then we can defend against all checks and enter with our king this way and when the rook moves over here we just have to find checks on these green squares and we will be able to fork the rook and this is gonna be pretty much a fork black has to block and after this king move black can't do anything he can't move the rook and if the king moves over here there is checkmate so that's a pretty funny sort of position so that's that's what happens if the rook moves here all right other than that let's say the rook moves here on the second turn in this case we have a check to defend against his check and then we bring our king in there's no checks for the rook and then we give checks on the diagonal and also notice this is actually a very similar pattern as before we control the check and we get rid of the king to advance our king and then a fork will soon follow let's say rook here 
we can just defend some of these squares, give checks, and bring our king in. You might you might be able to find that on your own. Maybe it's kind of still kind of hard. All right, now let's say rook moves all the way. In this case, we actually just have an easy fork. Okay, so king pretty much has to go here. Now let's take a look at this case. If the, if the rook moves, we actually still defend the square. And after that, we can get to our previous pattern that we learned. And if king here, we can bring our king in and this transposes to one of the previous lines over here that we looked at. Okay, now there's one more move, rook h1, let's say, and then we can actually bring our king, our queen backwards where we can actually just fork it. All right, this is pretty much it with this case where the rook is on the side of the board. All right, now we're back to this position. It is the third rank defense uh, type one where we used to bring our queen in here, except it is black's move. So let's see what happens if it's black's move and you can't play this maneuver. Let's say king moves here. Then we just attack the rook with our king. And then we can get to a previous pattern that we looked at. Otherwise, there are some other moves, but they can be also very hard to remember. All right, let's say, let's say the rook goes here. Now there is this sort of king maneuver. We bring our king in. We're attacking, we're attacking the rook. There's no other checks except this one. We're also threatening checkmate. So we give the check, and after this, there are no checks. So what can he do? A couple moves here, let's say rook d3, and we have some checks along these squares and we, we will be able to fork the rook. And then the rook gets forked, next move. Okay. All right, now let's say rook moves here, then we can actually just attack it while controlling the checking square once he checks us. For example, if rook g1 came here, and then it's a very easy win. So rook e1, and after queen b5, we will win the rook next move. So not that much to remember, but this is what happens if it's uh, black's move. All right, this is the final possibility of the third rank defense. It, the rook is on this square on the edge of the board and it's black's move. So what happens? If, if the rook goes here, obviously it transposes to the third rank defense that we also looked at. So let's look at other moves that don't really transpose. Let's say rook h2. And in this case, we have a check and we bring our queen in where it defends against the rook checks. All right, let's say um, rook h7. We have queen f5 attacking the rook once again. And here we're actually transposing to one of the previous variations that we looked at where the kings were here and we're attacking the rook. And of course, if rook b2, we bring the queen, queen to d4, and these are the same positions as before. And of course, if rook b2 over here, we play queen d4 right away. And of course, this is the same pattern we've seen before. And there's a lot of possible options. But overall, this transposes to the same pattern we've seen before after rook h2. We just get this check, queen here, and if the rook goes back, this is the only difference. We go here. Now let's say rook h1, we got 
a check, another check, and a fork, a fork next move. So that, that one's pretty simple. And this is the other pattern. All right, now let's take a look at some other possibilities for black's first move. If king of eights, if king of eight, in this case, we actually just chase him. Because in, in this case, king here will not be attacking the rook. So that won't do as much. So we just chase the king is the same pattern as before. And, and then it'll probably transpose to one of the previous lines. If the, if, uh, the rook checks over here, we can actually just bring our king in. And this is actually a transpose to the first type where we moved um, the king here. All right, that's it with the third rank defense. All right, we've reached the final set of patterns. And this one I call the fourth rank defense because it's very similar to the third rank defense, except the rook is cutting off our king on the fourth rank. And in this specific case, where the kings are off center, you might be able to play this variation. Once again, we bring our queen as close to the king as possible and as close to the center as possible. If the rook goes here and the kings are off center, you can give a check and then get the queen behind the king, defending against this check. And um, after king c7, we can cut off the king and advance our king along the way, for example, in this variation. And if the rook moves backwards, and also notice that anytime the rook moves on backwards on the same diagonal as the king, it will be pretty much impossible to actually make a fork out of it. So this will be a very uh, good defensive resource in many of these positions, the rook moving on the same diagonal as your king. But in any, any way you wanna check black's king while also defending squares or checking squares around your king. That will be one of the ideas. And whenever you can check the king back, you can do that, defending against the checks and forcing the king to stay close to the rook while you bring your queen close. And then this is a position we've already seen. Okay, so what can what, what else can black do? If rook c5, we can just bring our king in. And in this case, if he moves away, rook or queen e3, defend some of these squares that black's rook can check from behind. And we can make some progress here. If rook b5, we also can bring our king in. If the rook moves on the diagonal of our king, we can try to defend from behind. And we, there, there's ways to make progress. I wouldn't recommend memorizing all these lines, just uh, become familiar with some of the next moves or some of the patterns. Now, what happens if instead you go king d4? If you go king d4, uh, it's possible, but this is just uh, the nightmare scenario. This is probably the hardest set of positions to memorize because there's so many variations after rook a1 on the same diagonal as your king. No way to fork it, and it will be a whole lot of very difficult moves. Okay, now let's say the king moves backwards of, of, over here. We can bring our queen to defend against some of the checks. And because the king is on the edge, it will be much easier for us to work, work with. This is a very weird variation. Once again, we have to stop his king from coming in and then we bring our queen in and then we can advance the position a little bit and it's sort of the same as before except the rook is on this side and we can bring our king in okay there's other uh, variations here if king goes that way we just squeeze it as same as the third rank while also bringing our king in and then finally, we can't really bring our king in because of the checks. We have to find a way to get our queen behind. 
and there is this move to hide our king behind our queen and all these crazy patterns and variations where after hiding the king behind the queen there's just no way to fork it or, or there's always going to be a way to fork it okay and if uh, the other move here was king here there's more lines and this is just going to be very very difficult to remember but what I suggest if you want to take a look at some of these variations they are all in this study which I've linked in the description and I'm not going to try to explain everything here because it is just too complicated okay after queen b3 if other moves like this it is essentially a pattern of trying to defend against the checks from afar from whatever the rook goes behind the king you have to find some sort of way to get the queen involved to stop the checks Okay, also the reason I'm going uh, so fast is because most of the time this will not happen. We're gonna take a look at some of these other types in the next chapter. So in this case, actually, this exact case is pretty interesting and it resembles the third rank defense where we squeeze the king very far. And this move is also good, just bringing the king, but it's pretty funny how queen giving more space to the king actually transposes and it's a little bit better all right now let's take a look at the next chapter where the some more of the key moves and patterns are going to be found all right now let's take a look at some of the concrete examples of this fourth rank defense the previous chapter there are um, lines that you don't necessarily have to go into so in this first case where it's white's move it's very similar to the third rank defense where we could do this move to cut off this connection except that it's shifted one row up okay so in this case you could still play this move and it's pretty much just as good but there are a couple other variations but what i recommend you can do is actually just attack the rook right away and after the rook moves back we have this sort of um, a possible triangulation. Uh, this this wasn't available in the third rank defense because this square was off the board. So after we give this check, we can triangulate, and we're actually transposing to um, a previous position where the rook is here, and we move the king, and it's black's move. It's it's sort of a transposition. Now if the king king has to move. You bring your queen in, squeezing. If the rook moves back, you give some checks. And you will, we get to this position, which we'll analyze a little bit more in the next chapter. After queen here, or rook here, queen d4, we'll analyze more in the next chapter. And let's say if queen e5, or king e5 in this position, after, the, after we're trying to triangle it, if he tries to run away, there is this crazy sequence of moves and this is the only move by the way that doesn't lose a bunch of time it is queen to b4 just attacking the rook and the rook can't really escape because the king is blocking so he has to make a move to an awkward square so one of the one of the good squares is rook a2 and after this queen b3 just attacking the rook one more time the fork is actually unstoppable Wherever he moves, there will be a sequence of moves to fork. So let's say this uh, rook moves here. There's a check. And then there's a check. And then there will be a fork next move on this square. So I think that was the most challenging variation. Now let's say the rook moves here right away. There's this check. And if the king can, the king can never cross this line above because of this fork. So he has to go, and even here, so he has to go away, and we just follow this pattern, keeping an eye on this forking square. And eventually the king runs out of room off the board, and then we get to fork, fork the king. 
All right, now finally one more possibility. If the king moves backwards, we simply continue with our triangulation attempt. If he goes here, this is just the main line. And if he moves, if he moves over here, we can actually continue with the checks and we've squeezed the king once again. All right, now let's take a look at the next chapter, which is the crazy variation. All right, we're in the second type of the fourth rank defense when the rook is on the edge of the board. And same as the third rank defense, we continue with our king chasing the rook, preventing it from staying on this fourth rank. So if the king moves here, once again, we can just squeeze it. So the rook has one more option in this case, rook to a2, which is on the same diagonal as our king and therefore it will be very hard to fork it. So what we do in this case, we actually give a check in the middle, and now black has a lot of options, as you can see, and all of these different colors are met by the corresponding colors. So for example, if black's king moves to any of these red squares, we move our king to this red square. If uh, black's king moves to the orange, we move to orange, if black goes to blue, we go to blue, and if black goes to green, we go to green. So let's take a look at some of these lines. Let's start with king e6. So we'll go to the main line in a little bit. After king, uh, king e6, we play the corresponding move, and now black, we're threatening a fork, and black can't really defend. He doesn't have any checks. If let's say king e7, we play this sort of pattern again and he has to run into a fork and if let's say rook h2 it's pretty much the exact same pattern where the king has to run to the edge of the board and we get to fork it so in this case we move the king here and black cannot stop a fork all right next move let's say king c7 we may we move our king forward and after this, we'll be able to fork it. Nothing too crazy here. Now let's take a look at some of these harder ones. King c6, we have to play queen c3, actually setting up a discovered check because our king, our king is shielded, by, or his king is shielding our king from advancing. So we have to sort of either defend against the, the four or checks by the setting up a discovered check. Now, what are some of the best moves here? Um, if, um, if the rook goes over here, we have just a sequence of checks that kind of glues black's king to the rook. And we get to advance our king. And let's say there's two variations here for rook a7. This is a position we've already looked at. If rook a1, we can just fork it from afar. All right. And now if rook goes back here, we can just push the king back once again. And this is a position we've already reached before. And we can bring our queen closer and back to this position. So the main, the main point is after queen here, we were gonna be able to push the king back after the rook moves. Okay, so that's all the lines except the blue, the main line. And after king to e7, and we go queen here, the main line is king f7, but let's briefly take a look at all the other ones. So if king f8 is, actually the same as the main line. King d7, same as the main line. King d8, same as the main line. So what is this main line? After king f7, we play this, the most fantastic move I've ever seen, king to b5, away from all the action, threatening a fork, and wherever black moves, we will be able to um, win the rook, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. 
where there's some options but the pattern is this is the most beautiful position in this whole end game so let's take a look first move rook to a7 no obvious fork um actually let's take a look at non main lines first so after rook f2 queen c7 black's king is forced to go here and then a fork is next okay very crazy over there if rook a3 there is a queen check it's also along the diagonal of the rook allowing us to have many forking options and after this we have, we have a little fork okay anyway after rook a7 which is the main line we have this following sequence queen to f4 and this king is forced to go up because of all of these different checks which is just incredible and we actually bring our queen in backwards to keep an eye on these checks and after this we bring our queen backwards one more time and a check is inevitable after king h7 queen h2 this is a very similar pattern having to keep an eye on all these check um, checking or forking squares it's a very beautiful pattern so after this the main line it's it's just a easier variation of the main line after all these and in this case we can actually bring our king in without any checks and the rook will be won very soon okay that pretty much settles it with this type right here these are all the moves and after the main line we check king b5 black's rook is forced to forced to be won all right now there are a few more variations this is the fourth rank defense same setup as before but it's black's move and in this case black can make a different move which is rook b2 on the same diagonal as our king and in this case the main pattern will be a queen check followed by one of these moves to defend against some rook checks and hopefully our king can advance let's take a look at some of the variations of course they're not going to be very intuitive so you might have to memorize them and or hope that you never get them so if the king moves here queen a5 defends against the check now there are some possible moves the main line is rook b7 and after a check forces the king to defend the rook and our king gets in and we've made a lot of progress okay so what else can black do if he goes here we can actually move our king in front opposition and there's no more checks and then we can advance this way for example okay if the king moves up we defend against the check now there's a couple other options let's say the king moves back here we just give a check and then we can advance our king and if king moves to e6 that is the other square we can still advance our king there's no checks and after this move if the king tries to run away we give this check and then the rook will be one okay and after rook f2 in this line still on the same diagonal as our king we play this move queen d4 which is very similar to a previous move we've seen where we attack we sort of put our queen on the diagonal of the king attacking the rook very similar so let's take a look at rook c2 we have king b5 no more checks and, and this is actually very very interesting we can also go queen king d5 but let's say king b5 and then we can advance and then there's got to be some sort of fork because the 
the, the rook cannot stay close to the king. All right, if rook f5, we play this move king b4, and now a rook, uh, a fork will be very hard to stop, surprisingly. So some of the, some of the only moves are rook h5, that leaves this check, and an easy fork for rook f3, the queen comes in this way, leading to a fork. All right, also, let's see why, why is king c4 not good, because of rook a5, and now it's very hard to stop this check. Pretty interesting. So that should be most of the variations for this case, where black's rook goes here. We try to defend some of this, some of those squares, and we can usually push the king back. This is the main line, which means uh, this is the main line, which means that's what the computers will play if you want to beat the computers. If you want to beat humans, you gotta look at most of these lines. So, I, I'm me personally, from all the practice I've done, I've never really had to memorize most of these lines, which is why I'm I'm not really explaining that much in detail but they do exist, so I have to include them. All right, that's it for this variation. Now, this final position with the rook on the edge and being black's move, this is the nightmare variation. There are so many variations here that I'm not even gonna try to explain them all, but I do have them listed in case you wanna somehow take a look at them. So I'm going to go over some of the main lines that you're more likely to face against the computer. All right, rook a1 is the main move here on the same diagonal as our king, which means we um, um, there's no easy way to fork it. So the main idea here is we want to give a check and bring our queen back to defend against these checks. So let's take a look. Okay. So now the rook has some options, the king has some options. The main line here is after king e7, we play queen c3, attacking the rook while also make, um, defending some of the checks uh, against our king. And after this, we have check and check, and our king can advance. So this is the main line, and if you remember this, you'll probably be able to beat most computers and table bases. So let's recap queen here. The king will move back, you attack the rook, and then you give a check, check, and advance, and advance the king. Now let's say the rook moves back, which is not really, not really one of the main moves, but is one of the hardest to find. So one of the main moves is here. And then you go here and you've made progress. You'll it'll probably lead it into one of the previous patterns. Rook h6 is the other move, but then after we check, check behind, and then we can still advance. So that might be one thing to remember if king here, we just bring our king in, and if king g5, there's still some checks after. Actually, yeah, this is one of the only moves. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's other variations in case you don't remember this, but in this case, any discover check will probably be, actually, this is the only one. Yeah, you can advance the king. The, the king cannot give a discover check while shielding your king. And if king g4, it's still, it's a pretty easy line, so you don't have to remember it. Okay, now for rook a1, there is this pattern. You have to come back to this square. And then there will be some checks for you and that will allow you to advance the king. Advance the king while defending against the checks. So if you want to remember that, that's fine. Okay. Those are some of the possible variations in this exact line. Now let me scroll all the way back. 
So this is the main pattern. Now there is another move here. Let's say king d7 and you play king c4 and after a check you play king d5 and then you kind of defend some of this I, and and then <laughs> and then you get back to this variation and then after some checks you get to make progress it's very hard to describe and i don't want to spend too much time thinking about this or trying to explain because there's almost no explanation but one of the main moves here that the computers will play um, it's one of these top two moves which is the mo more important one is rook g1 and after this this rook g1 you have to give this check first after queen a3 blue square will play this green square will play that so let's take a look at the main variation um, this is a move it's not the top move but i feel like it might be easier to remember after this it will be actually pretty much the, the main line reflected let's say let's say where is it let's say king here we give this check and now there are so many options that it will be just very hard to remember I've drew some arrows to indicate the best move after each one of these possibilities but it's just going to be very uh, too complicated to remember so the main line though is going to be king to d7 and then you can bring your king in um, let's take a look at some of these other variations the rook g6 and give chucks to bring your king in after rook e1 check king here there are a couple other moves let's say check king c5 no more checks and then you just have to control that square with using checks and this is going to be a, a, pretty much the same pattern as that second rank defense that we looked at let's say rook e2 now we have to get to this square this golden square and after that we can advance the king rook e7 we can give some checks to get to this position which we already know and so on so that that's probably the only thing you should remember I would only suggest really looking at these top lines because that's what the computers will mostly play now the other thing I wanted to do is look at some of these other moves one, I've had one computer play king c6 which is the tricky move because after queen b3 he can play king d6 and in this case where when you play this this check and the king is somehow in front of your king then you have to follow this variation which is a check and then king c5 and after this you have to play queen b5 and this is very incredible you have to play queen behind your king so that you stop the checks using a discover check so that's that's the only line you'll have to remember in case you find yourself that the king is in front of yours now let's take a look at some of these if the king was back and you do the same variation now you have this move queen f3 and then some other king maneuver that will get the rook into position so that you can advance but yeah in any case if the king stays back it will be let's just say it will be much easier to find a way to advance your king because his king is not shielding all right so if you want to take a look at more of these variations i suggest that you look into this study i've listed them all uh, let's let me just see what is up with these 
Oh yeah, the 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 exclamation mark moves are um, in many of these variations, which is just too hard to remember. So I've went I went over the main lines that the computer would play. So the main line after Black's rook moves back, you actually just bring your queen in over here, and then you bring your queen over there, and then you do some checks to advance your king, and some more checks to advance your king. So that's pretty much one of the only lines you'll have to remember if you're playing against the computer. And the other one is this one, where you give a check first, and then you bring your king in. And this is actually very just the main line reflected here. All right, um, I'm not gonna spend that much time talking about this one because it's just way too complicated. So I will leave that up to you. All right, now that we got through the hard stuff, I have some miscellaneous patterns that didn't really fit into any of the previous ones I found, but they can still come up and it's gonna be useful to know. So this is a pattern where your king is blocked by the rook, but they're all on this back rank. So in this case, you can actually squeeze their pieces by giving this check. The rook will have to block. Yeah, otherwise there will be a very easy win of the rook. And then you play this move. Uh, this is not the only move, but it, this move that makes more sense to me, which kind of stops all the other moves on this file. And essentially, the king will have to move. There's one other move which we'll look at, but after the king moves, you just take away all the squares around the king. Now, let's see if the rook moves here, we bring our king in, and then we have a zigzag pattern to win the rook or fork the rook. All right, what else can black do after this? If he goes rookie one right away, there will be some sort of sequence of checks to, for you to win the rook. So this is what it looks like. And the rook will be one. Now if king d8, king f7, advancing the king, the rook has to move now. And then there will be a very easy fork. Okay, now what happens after rook e1 right away? And this is the key move, which is queen to g5, setting up a discover check. And this is, this is the funny part. So let's say uh, black checks, we give a discover check, and then we can bring our queen in to try to fork the rook very easily. Let's say the king moves, then we're, our queen is again free to give checks and eventually fork the rook. And now this move, rook d1, now we can give the check, and then once again our queen can get in and find a way to fork the rook or threaten checkmate. And this is a pattern we've seen before. All right, that's pretty much it with this exact, this exact pattern of king and rook. All right, now there's one more similar pattern with this sort of back rank squeeze. And in this case, after we give this check and the rook blocks, uh, when we move over here, it's not really the same because these squares are not possible for the rook to go to. Last time, the rook was over, over here on this red square. So in this case, the difference will be that we have to bring our queen back and you can think of it as stopping the king from going there. And now the king has more limited options. Let's say king d7, we can play this check which will force the king to stay glued to the rook, otherwise he will lose it. And then this queen f5, which is basically a waiting move. And black cannot stay guarding the rook with the king, so the rook will have to move and let us in. Okay, now let's take a look at some variations of king here. Queen h3 still works. 
and our king still gets in and then there's going to be forks okay now finally one more variation if the king moves uh, away right away there will be a very easy sequence of checks that will win the rook of course there's also this one if you just want to skewer the rook okay that's pretty much it with this one it's a very interesting queen maneuver but um, i hope you remember it all right now this is the third miscellaneous pattern and it doesn't really fit in any of the categories but i found myself in this position sometimes and the point here is that our queen is attacked and black's king is getting ready to escape behind the rook away in the center and that's why we play this move queen f5 and the pattern will be to actually get the queen to e4 as you'll see in this main line so black moves here and we have to play a move like queen f3 there are other possibilities uh, that are just as good uh, to win the rook in just the same amount of time but queen f3 is the nicest because after the king moves we play queen e4 and after rook f7 rook moves away we can give a check and advance the king because the square is covered and then it's going to be an easy way to win the rook all right if he checks you just go here and it's going to be clearly an easy win or fill it our position okay now what happens if the king tries to run away still then you just go here and after rook e7 queen d5 you have to hide your king here behind your queen that's the point and that's the variation so just to remember king can't really go here because of the skewer it's so rook here and this is also what we what we'll also see in the next one of the miscellaneous puzzles called a ros rosette all right now there's one more variation if the rook goes to this square on the first move we will play queen attacking the rook now if the rook moves back we go back to the same pattern as the main line where the queen is here and then we can check and bring the king in otherwise we have this funny pattern of checks a check, they're just checks to eventually control this square and let our king in and now we transpose to a philidor all right this is pretty much it with this pattern this is another position that doesn't really fit any of the patterns. The table base suggests black go here, after which we'll obviously play this move and get an easy, easy win. However, black can try to play the rook over here on the first move. And now this leads to a completely new queen dance to get to one of these squares defending, defending um, the checks from the rook. So let's take a look at the main line. Queen a6, queen b5, force the king there. And now the funny move, queen c4, quiet move, setting up discoveries. That's why uh, black cannot check. And after king moves, we give a check. And we can also jump in with the king apparently. But after this check, it's going to be a fork on the rook next move. And after this, we fork. And if the rook blocks, we just attack it and we win. So that's the main line. It's pretty much a force line to win the rook. But let's take a look at some of the other possibilities that can happen. If after we set up this discover check, if the rook goes to a1, we just advance the king. <laughs> no more checks still. If the king moves to d7, we have queen a4 and this will transpose to a previous line that we will look at now if king 
um, which is this one, king b8, but if king d7, queen a4, and after king d6, there's no checks, and it'll be an easy win. Okay, now the final variation, if the king goes here on the first move, after this check and this, it just transposes to the main line, which is right here. Okay, that's pretty much it with this pattern. It's just a pattern of queen checks and one quiet move. And I thought this was pretty interesting. This is the next miscellaneous position. And we've seen this position before in one of, one of these fourth rank uh, defenses. But the only way to make progress here when the, the kings are on the bishop files Queen's right next to it, and the rook is in the corner towards the queen. Anyway, if you set up this move, queen g5, setting up discoveries, black uh, cannot really check you because you just advance. So some of the main moves are over here, rook a1, after which you give the discover check. King can't go to the red squares because of a fork, and if he goes to the green, there's going to be a fork with these moves. So he has to go here, and then you have to remember, you pretty much just have to memorize this line here, and it's the moves are kind of forced. After check, if here, then there's a fork, so check. And after check, we can bring in the king, and we can hide it here. And then this is a position we've seen before previously. All right, so now if king a3, that's one other option. The king can just come in, and there's there's just some checks to defend this square. And after this, this square is also covered. Okay, anyway, back to the beginning. There's one more move, rook d1. And in this case, we're not going to be checking in this direction we're checking in the other direction and there's going to be a series of checks that will let us advance the king and if you can somehow remember that you will know how to pretty much win this position all right this is the final miscellaneous pattern and this one is called a rosette because all the pieces are in a knight's move away from each other. And this specific rosette, you'll notice that black's rook is on the long diagonal one square away from the corner. You'll also notice that white's king and queen are together, black's king and rook are together, and black's, black and white's kings are next to each other on the edge of the board. So in this specific rosette, there is this nice sequence of moves to actually make progress very quickly. We start with a check. Black's king has to go here, and then we check again. Now if the rook blocks, there's gonna, just gonna be a check made in one move, so he has to go here, and then we bring our king in, and we form this sort of nice um, angle kind of pattern. Now, what can black do? Uh, let's take a look at some of the other moves. If rook g2, queen d4 stops the check, and then we get to the line pattern. If rook goes the other way, queen d4 once again stops, well, doesn't stop the check, but stops the next check. And after this, we've seen this pattern before. We give a check and advance the king. And this will be a very easy win of the rook. Okay, so that's what can happen, but the main line is king g8. And here, if you can remember queen c3 and queen b2, that's the top line. But if you can't, I just suggest, again, just a queen in the center. And let's say, for example, king f8. We can just give a check and get to the previous pattern. But if not, you can look at some of these other moves, which can be pretty interesting too. Okay, now what if the rook moves here? Then we can actually just advance the king 
and you can you're, you're just going to be able to see the black hand defend and finally if king moves here then after queen d8 we've reached our previous pattern so that's pretty much it with this specific rosette the main moves are these checks the king move queen in the center and then you can even get to this previously known pattern all right that's pretty much it with the lecture now it might seem difficult to try to remember all these patterns but you don't actually have to know them very well to prove it to you i'm going to beat these computers from various places all in a row let's start with the leeches practice now this is the easiest position because it's one of our known patterns already so we just follow it Okay, and all right, so I did the first one. All right, now let's go ahead and play against the computer, Stockfish level eight. And I'm gonna give myself two minutes. All right, so let me just bring my king in. I have to try to somehow dodge all the checks. So let me just, I'm just going to put my queen here somewhere close. Okay, and then I think I can bring my king in. Okay, I'm just going to give a check of the rook blocks. I can go here. So let me just bring my king in. Okay, the checks are threatened over there possibly. You just give a check to push the king back. Get my king in. Now if I go here, yep, that looks good. And now I'm um, sort of pushing the king. Now if I go back, there's, there's some stalemate tricks. So um, I'm actually very, this is very close to the second rank, the fence. Yeah, this is very close. I'm actually trying, I'm gonna try to get it exactly. Yes, I think, yep, this is just a mirrored version of the second rank. And now I have this square that I can check and fork. All right, so that's Stockfish level eight. Okay, now let's play again. And this time I'm gonna play against the table base. And not just the top move, but I'm gonna try to play the one where um, the highest distance to zeroing, which is the longest distance to capture the rook. And I know my moves are gonna be shown here too, but I'm gonna try not to look at them. And you're just gonna have to trust me on this. So I'm just gonna, oh yeah, and, and this way my king is actually stuck in this position. My king's also stuck. So I'm just gonna play some moves. This is the top move. And I think I have to try to just bring my king in somehow, eventually. And try to get the rook. Okay, so the rook comes off. Okay, I'll just give a check. And now, just the best way to bring my king in. I'm just gonna give a check here. Mm, okay, I can bring my king in this way or just give a check and then bring my king in. Okay, now if I pin the rook, the king, or I can, I can just give a check and then bring my king in actually. Okay, I can still bring my king in. Okay, there's two choices. The hardest looking one is this one, so I'm going to pick that one. Um, now, if I give a check and he blocks, can I, I, I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna pin it so I can actually bring my king in. And then, yep. All right. Okay, so now we're getting into the fourth rank defense pattern. 
and let me just put my queen as close to the king as possible and as close to the center as possible and after I go here he's gonna go rook h8 and now I have played this chuck okay so the one I know least is king e1 but actually that's probably the it's probably a little bit easier but yeah I'm just gonna do this one because I don't I don't know it as well okay now I think it was um hard to say is it this see I, I don't remember everything I'm just gonna play this because it seemed like one of my patterns now oh wait I think I think I know I think I know what I, I think it's this one followed by queen here and then bringing my king in okay yeah I mean I saw it but yeah but yeah I, I saw before I looked at the uh, Um, at the table base so these are both the same I guess I'm just gonna pick the one with the highest distance to mate now if I go here there's no checks and this square is covered okay so now we have the pattern and now it's just gonna be easy from here Okay, this is the easiest pattern to be in. Um, yep. And I basically won. I think I can stop here. All right, so next one, I'm going to play against the chess master. And they have a drill over here called mate with king and queen against king and rook. So I'm going to do that as well. So we have a random position, the rook's about to give checks, so I'm going to put my queen here. I can even, I, all I got to do is stop the checks, more or less, and bring my king in. Um, I'll just go here, and here, and I forked, <laughs> I forked the rook. Okay, I think I got to do this again, because that was too easy. I somehow stumbled into a... A fork. All right. Hopefully, a position where um, this looks like he might be. I might be able to win the. Yeah, it says checkmate in ten. Yeah, let me let me do a different one. Checkmate in twelve. Okay, you know, I guess it's trying to give me easy ones like queen here. So I'm gonna give it some moves, and. Hopefully this will make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, made in 24, so. Okay, I'm just gonna bring my king in. Now I know that this move, he can't block with the rook because of that check. Um, there will be a check trap. So now I'm pushing my, the king back and we're getting into a third rank defense and this one's the easiest to break through. This is the easiest case or one of the easiest Okay, now we have the line pattern. I just have to triangulate and get into the philidor. And then you check in the center. Now, because the rook moved towards my queen to the edge, I got to check twice in the center. And then I can move to the opposite corner, win the rook, and checkmate. All right, so I've just won many times in a row this endgame. And I, against humans, it's probably going to be pretty easy if you know some of the patterns so I hope this video helped